What do you mean, Conduit Air? This door will be raised panel style, similar to many kitchen cabinets. To start the door, we're going to size these vertical pieces. Now this is a critical dimension because I don't want the door to be super obvious. So I'm going to use the shooting board to get the precise length for a piston fit. Here you can see how tight the fit is. Now let's cut the groove for the panel. To lay out this dado, I first set my marking gauge to a quarter inch and measured in from each side and made a tiny mark. You can see where I highlighted them in pencil. I then checked the middle dimension against the width of my cutting implement. If it's a little bit off, you have to make a micro adjustment to your marking gauge and then redraw your lines. Because we're using the same setting on the marking gauge from either side, it's automatically going to be centered. I then deepen my marking gauge marks with a knife so I can get a nice crisp edge, especially since one of these will show on the face of the door. With your quarter inch chisel, cut out this dado just like you did the rabbit on the frame in part one. Again, if you have access to a plow plane or a combination plane, those can make the job a lot quicker. Cut this groove around the inside edge of all four pieces of the door frame. Once we've cut the dados and all of our panel sides, we have to lay out tenons in the top and bottom piece here. And we simply come along here and mark our depth. In retrospect, I'm going to suggest that you make these tenons half an inch long and deepen the groove to a half inch where needed with a chisel. This will provide a lot stronger joint. We also have to mark our depth along here. In this case, we've already got the dado to delineate what that will be. Simply mark it like that, and then the little quarter inch outside of your other line. To cut this tenon, we're first going to cut down this way to, depth, to this depth here, and then we'll chisel in from this end carefully to get all this waste out of here. Start by making a knife wall out of our marking gauge mark. And then carefully saw to our line. Alright, I'm to depth back here. Now I can concentrate on the front. to depth on front. Now I just carefully work my way in the middle here until it bottoms out. Listen carefully. There we go. When your saw cut is to depth, you can split out the rest with a chisel. First I come in and make a small chop to make sure the grain is going in a favorable direction. It is, so I can get more aggressive. Right up to the line here. A hair shy on our saw cut, which is better than too deep. And we can come in and pair this perfectly flat. Being careful not to take off much. Because we don't want our tendon to be longer than our dado. you may want to check your fit 
just so you don't take too much off in case there's any error in your layout. That's the basic joinery of the frame for the door. Now let's work on the panel. In this case I'm going to use scraps left over from what I've already done. You'll have a lot nicer effect if you have a board that's this whole width. But I've tried to arrange the straight grain on this to be balanced out by the straight grain on this and I think it'll all look okay. It goes with the pallet wood theme that I've already got going. One trick if you have to glue up a panel is when you're jointing your individual pieces actually put a slight dish in here that way when you clamp it up the ends will be touching, you'll have a slight gap here and one clamp will pull the middle together. Again, if you're starting out, I recommend just get a board that's plenty wide and flatten it. Now, to cut it to size, let's look at our frame of our door. We've come in a quarter inch all the way around with this dado. So, you'd think we might want our panel to be half an inch wider and taller. But actually, we want a little bit of play in here to allow for contraction and expansion, especially this direction. The grain's running this way. It's going to expand and contract more this way. So instead of adding half an inch, I think we'll add like uh, 7 sixteenths to this dimension here. So let's get that marked out and cut up the board. Once again, we clean up our saw cut with the shooting board. You can see here I've put a slight bevel on what's going to be the back edge. This is to prevent tear out, a la Rob Cosman. Looking good. Next, I want to do my layout for the raised panel effect. In this case, I'm going to reference my thickness strictly off the back edge. Normally, you'd taper from both sides, but I want my back to be flat to hold the teacup hooks. You'll see those shortly. So I've set my marking gauge to the same width as the dado that it's, the panel is going to rest in, and I'm marking all the way around here. Having laid out the edge, now we can lay out the front. I'm going to use pencil here because I don't want a groove from my marking gauge to be showing on the final product. The exact dimension doesn't matter a whole lot. In this case, I just went for what I felt was aesthetically pleasing. Now to get the raised panel effect, we don't need any fancy router bits or anything like that. You can do just fine with a little hand plane. You'll notice that even though I am working across the grain with the motion of the plane, the blade is pointed with the grain. This will avoid tear out. Now if you see that you're starting to progress faster on one side than the other, it's okay to take a few short strokes to even it up and then just vary the position of your hand so everything works out nice and even. And as we go along here, we're going to make sure that we're progressing towards both of our layout lines at the same time. I've chosen to do a crisp angled effect here. However, it's perfectly fine for you to do a curved kind of pillow effect as well.
as we get close to our line, we're going to want to test fit. In this case, we're just a wee bit tight. So we're going to take a few more passes and get a relaxed fit, we'll call it. The long edge of the panel is with the grain, so it's a lot easier. Just make sure, as before, when you work along, keep checking your lines. Make sure you're progressing towards each one at the same time. Another point of reference as you're working these adjoining sides is this angle here between the corner of the panel and the corner of the raised bit. As you get close to the proper depth, it's actually going to go perfectly from corner to corner. Here you can see we're not quite there yet. Once you've finished all four edges of your bevel, you may want to plane the flat part just a few thin passes to crisp up the edges. Going to fast forward through the uh, cursing and swearing of the glue up here. Just kidding. Uh, but the things that you want to pay attention to is A, make sure everything's square, and then B, check to make sure it's square again. And finally, don't put any glue on the panel. Remember, it's a free floating panel to allow for contraction and expansion. So we're only gluing our tenons into the groove. I let the glue dry overnight and now I'm going to plane the edges to make up for any little inconsistencies in my joinery and also to ensure that I've got a perfect fit of the door in the frame. For simple aesthetics, I've rounded off the top and bottom of the cabinet frame, as, and I'm also going to round off the left and right edges of the door frame. This can be accomplished using a small hand plane, or if you have access to a spoke shave, that is another good option. So if you do use a spoke shave, it's just like like the plane, start at a 45. Until you're about a third of the way there, and then start rounding over from that halfway, and then take off the points of that so you get less and less of a facet. And eventually you'll probably end up with using sandpaper. One thing about a spoke shave on a long straight like this is depending on the size of the sole, you might start dishing out or making a convex. So be aware of that. The plane obviously has more area to register to. And fine tune with the sandpaper. This is the greatest stuff since the invention of sandpaper as far as curves are concerned. And if you want to go old, old school and not use sandpaper, you can use shavings to burnish the edge. Now with these facets, that might take a lot of elbow grease. Eventually, it does give a very nice finish. Before gluing the frame together, we're going to assemble the hinge mechanism. I'm going to use dowels. Nothing wrong with going out and buying some hinges. So this dowel is going to poke in the top and bottom of the frame as well as the top and bottom of the door. And to accomplish the centering of those, I'm going to use dowel centers. Also, I'm going to make sure that the door pivots to the outside of the frame instead of crashing into it, if that makes sense. I've test fit this dowel to this bit so I know that they fit snugly. And I've also put a flag on my bit 
to ensure that I don't go too deep and lose my dowel on the hole. Once I've drilled the holes in my door, I can insert the dowel center. Now I check everything is square and I carefully place the top on the frame. The little point of the dowel center will mark the center of the hole that I have to drill in the top piece. Test this for fit. Well, that's pretty solid. I like it. Repeat this process for the bottom and then insert your dowels and test out your hinging motion. So before I do the glue up, I'm going to go ahead and finish the door. Prior to glue up is also an ideal time to put the teacup hooks in the back of the door panel. You'll notice I've got a flag on my drill bit again so I don't go too deep and poke through the front of it. This is particularly challenging because the front is tapered. I'm pre-drilling because this black maple is rather hard wood and in addition to that I'm using paste wax on the threads of the hook that helps it cut through the fibers instead of tearing them out. Please stay tuned for part three where we cover finish and final assembly.